Do you use Google Chrome? What about Firefox? Have you ever considered giving Microsoft Edge a try? Well, before you do, watch today's video because I'm going to show you nine incredible features that might make you want to switch to Edge. But before we start, just a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards from Integral IT. We help businesses all over the world with a Microsoft 365. Now the first incredible feature of Microsoft Edge is something called collections. So what's a collection? Well, as the name suggests, a collection is a collection of websites. Now I don't know about you, but when I arrive at work in the morning, I have to open the same four or five websites every day. These websites are the ones that I need to be able to do my job. Now this can usually take a bit of time, not with collections, I can do it with just a couple of clicks. Let me show you how. Now to access collections in Edge, we click on this icon here. So if I open that, you can see that I've got a collection already. It's called work applications. I can go into that, I can come back out of that. Now what I can do is I can right click on that and I can open four of these applications. These are my common work applications. Now get this, if I come out of Edge and go back in, that work applications is still there. So if I click on there, you can see that my tabs move along. I can kind of open and close it. That is because if I right click on it, you can see that this is pinned to the top of Edge. So it opens all the time. Now, if I don't want that to happen, I can simply unpin it. And the next time I launch Edge, that won't be there. But it is quite helpful. So to cre create a new collection, you simply go into it and you click on Start New Collection. From there, I can enter a name for this. So let's call this, pretend I'm going on a trip to London. So I can call this London Hotels. What I can then do is go to a few hotel sites. So I could go on here. This is a popular one for me. I can then go to here and I can add this current page into the collection. I can go to another one. And again, what I can do, I can add this to the collection. So now I've got another collection called London Hotels. This means when I come back later and I want to book some hotels, I can simply right click and I've got the option just to open all of these. So that is collections. It's a real time saver. The next feature in Microsoft Edge that might make you want to switch are progressive web apps. What are they? Well, with progressive web apps, you can install a web page as an application on your computer. You can add to your start menu or your taskbar and it can auto start when you log onto your computer. What's the benefit of that? Well, these web apps can run faster than if you run it in a web browser. Plus sometimes you can access it offline. Now it might be best if I show you. Okay, we've got LinkedIn here open just in a web browser in Edge. So how would I install this as a progressive web app? Well, I go up to these three dots here. I'd go to apps and I'd click on install this site as an app. I can then call it a name. So I'll just call it LinkedIn and I can click on install. Now it says app installed. I've got a few options. I can pin it to the taskbar, pin it to the start, and I can create a desktop shortcut. I can even say auto start this when the device logs in. Again, it's saving time. I'll just click on create desktop shortcut, click on allow, and then I'll close this down and I'll come out of here as well. And you can see now I've got a LinkedIn here and I've also got a LinkedIn in my taskbar. And if I launch that, it just launches like an app. So there you go, progressive web apps. Again, saving time and very convenient. Now the next feature that I find incredibly useful in Microsoft Edge is split screen. Now split screen, split your screen. screen. It's a little bit like if you've got dual monitors, but you might not have dual monitors. So how do I use split screen? Well, in our business for accounting, we've got two different systems, both running over a web browser. We usually constantly flick in between two screens. Not anymore with split screen, I can just split these and I can access both at the same time. Let me show you how. Okay, I'm in Edge. Let's go to a website. Let's go to my IT company's website. I click on there and then I go to the split screen tab, which is here. 
I split the screen and as you can see another screen appears. Now I've got my primary website here or I can type in another website in this section. So if I just go to bbc.co.uk, you can see that this split screen is now in effect. So it's working like we've got two monitors. And we've got a few options here. If we click on these three little dots here, we can split the screen horizontally if you like, which is interesting. That might work better for you. I can go back at the top now and switch that back. And then we've got some more options. We can swap the sides around if we want, or we can simply exit it. And when we exit it, we just get the two tabs open there. So there is split screen. Now, what other features can I show you in Edge? I know, what about Edge's built-in screen capture? Now, there might be times when you're browsing the internet where you want to capture something, or you want to capture an entire web page. Well, you can do this with Edge. I find this really handy. I sometimes capture web pages and I add them into my Microsoft OneNote in case I need to refer to it later. Let me show you how. Okay, so we found a really useful blog. It's the ultimate Microsoft to do tutorial. So what can we do here? Well, again, I can go up here and I can go to screenshot. Now I've got a couple of options. If I just want to screenshot part of the page like this one, like this bit here, I can simply do that. I can mark up a capture, and then I've got the ability to do a few things. I can draw on here, so I can use different thickness, different colors. If I wanted to, I could make some notes on there. I can also erase them if I want to do, so I'll just go over there. And once I'm happy with that, I can click simply save it, and it would save it as a JPEG, and I would just have this image. Or what I could do, so I don't want to save that, I could go up to here, screenshot, and I could capture the full page. Now I've got the full page. This is a full blog on how to use Microsoft to do. That could be really handy for later. If I save that, you can see that it's saved as a screenshot and then I can simply open that file and I've got the full page as a JPEG. And what I can do there, I can zoom it. I can zoom in if it's too small and I can save that until later. So screen capture, incredibly useful tool. Now let's move on to the next feature of Microsoft Edge, and that is the immersive reader. Now you might land on a web page and you might want to read it, but it might be really cluttered. There might be lots of pop-ups going on, a lot of adverts, and all you want to do is read the web page. Well, what you can do is you can switch on the immersive reader and it makes it nice and clean. Let me show you how. Okay, I've got a web page here that I want to read. Now you can see there's a lot going on. We've got all the headers here with different options. Down the right hand side here, we've got different links that we can click on. So there's a lot going on. I might just want to read the content of this article. So to do that, I go up to the top here and I enter Immersive Reader. And you can see that it just presents me with the text and it presents me with the images. It's much, much easier to read it. Now it goes a step further. So what I can do as well, I can listen to it and I can choose the option to read aloud. Let me show you that. Premier League and EFL. English football is finished without deal, says Peter Rixdale. So you might want to do that. Also, we've got some text preferences. So we can change the font if we want to do. We can change the column style. So that makes it a bit thinner, a bit fatter. We can also change the theme if we want it in dark mode or something like that. And we've got some options for the text size as well. So again, what we can do, we've got lots of options to read these pages without a lot going on. And to exit that reader, all I simply do is click on the icon again and it takes me back to the website. Okay, what about system performance? How can you optimize this in Microsoft Edge? Do you ever hear people complain that the computer is running slow? And when you look, they've got a hundred Chrome windows open. Well, in Edge, there's a couple of things you can do. Firstly, you can switch on something called efficiency mode. Efficiency mode makes your Edge run more efficient. What it will do if you've got Edge windows open, it will put them into sleep mode after 30 minutes of inactivity. So they'll use a lot less resource. Plus, it's got another feature. It's got something called a browser task manager. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Windows Task Manager, where if something freezes, you can open it 
and you can end the process. Well, Edge has got its own built-in browser task manager, so you can see what web pages or what web extensions are causing the most noise, and you can end them. Let's have a look at how those two work. Okay, we're in Edge. Let's first turn on efficiency mode, okay? So I go up to the three dots here, and I go to settings. Then I go to system and performance, and you can see that efficiency mode is here. So we can click on the question mark, and it tells me all about efficiency mode, okay? I can simply click on got it there, and I can switch efficiency mode on. Now, if I've got lots of web pages open, which I understand I haven't, I can still go and I can look at the task manager of Edge. So I go to the three dots again, I go to more tools, and you can see I've got a browser task manager. Now it shows me, even though I've not really got anything open, that I've still got a few utilities open and a few extensions. So if I've got lots of web pages open, they will all appear here, and you can see what CPU and what memory it's using. If there's something that's causing a problem, I can simply click on it and I can end the process. So there's a few tips about performance. Now we all need tools to be able to do our jobs. We might need a calculator or a dictionary or a language translator. We can get all this in your Edge sidebar by using Edge tools. Let me show you. Okay, I'm in Edge and I've got my sidebar switched on here. So to get this sidebar, if you're missing it, you can simply go to the three dots, you can go to settings, you can go to sidebar, and you make sure that this is switched on, okay? So now that this is switched on, you can see I've got some popular apps down this side. I've got my Microsoft 365, so I can go into things like that. It's connected to my OneDrive. That is incredibly handy, okay? I've also got Outlook if I want to launch that. And it just opens it like this, okay? So again, very handy. But I've also got one called Tools, and this is the one that I want to show you here. I'll just minimize all these, but it's simple. I've got a calculator when I need it, or within the sidebar. I've got a unit converter, a dictionary, a clock, and the translator. So it's well worth adding the tools into your sidebar. And finally, another feature that I think you will love within Microsoft Edge is the ability to annotate PDF files right within the browser. Now, like a lot of browsers, Edge gives you the ability to open PDF files, but it goes a few steps further. You can make amends to these. You can highlight things, you can draw on it, you can rub things out. You can do an awful lot. Let me show you. Okay, I've got this incredibly useful PDF open now in my Edge window. Now you can see I've got lots of different tools at the top. So first I've got a highlighter, so I can click on there to enable the highlighter. Then I can start highlighting parts of the PDF that I want to do. I can then go onto here and I can add comments. Also, I can manually draw on here, so I can go into draw mode. Again, I can choose a different color, I can choose a different thickness, and then I can doodle on there. Now, I've made a bit of a mess at that, but there's no problem because I've also got a bit of a rubber here. So I can just click on there and it gets rid of it. Once I'm happy with my changes, what I can do, I can save them and I can forward this on to people. So that's how to amend PDFs in Edge. So that is it. That is nine incredible features in Microsoft Edge that might make you want to make the move from Google Chrome. Look forward to seeing you again soon.